Kale Quick here, Free Strike Productions. In this video, we're going to go over all the different types of prefabs. Uh, prefabs are just kind of pre made object shapes, and uh, you use them to uh, build your objects. Like here, I have a cube, and here I had an uh, icosphere. So, first, what we're going to do new command, double tap A. Clicking it once will diselect what you have, and then clicking and tapping it again will select everything. Then you hit X or delete, and then you delete everything. Now, you'll notice we're kind of off. The camera is off center there, but we have our 3D cursor in the center, so when we make something new, it'll pop up in the center. So you can focus on it and get there in the center. Now, this is just a flat plane. Uh, very simple prefab. You can use this to kind of represent terrain or something. You can expand it, put little valleys and stuff in it using tools that I'll show you at a later date. But yeah, so that's a plane. We have a cube, which is a very simple. We'll actually be using this to make something later. Then there's a circle, which doesn't have a completed face, which is why it's transparent at the moment. But uh, it does form, you know, a ring. And there's two different types of sphere here. There's the UV sphere, which you can see is broken down uh, like latitude and longitude, just like the uh, planet and old maps and stuff. And you notice that everything here is a square, but I said earlier everything is made out of uh, triangles. Now, these, for your convenience, as the uh, artist, are shown as quads, which is what's called when there's four vertices. And uh, a lot of algorithms and tools work best with quads. Uh, for instance, you can always subdivide a quad into four more quads at a, without changing kind of the shape or topo topology of something. Um, with triangles and other types of shapes and stuff, that's not true. So for a lot of modeling, everything is done in quads, especially for uh, artistic purposes. But these are still subdivided. There is a line here that you just can't see. Um, I'll show you, maybe I'll show you that when we're uh, modeling later. But they are still divided in triangles, it's just you see them as quads, because that's the way that the computer program builds it for the artists. And so here, we'll see it's not quads at the top, and this is kind of a weird thing with this sphere, is that it is broken down into triangles here at the last bit. And in some games you can see this, and there's a couple glitches that come with this when you try to put a texture up here. So it'll come to a very fine point, and the textures will kind of get confused. So it'll look fine around here, but then it get messed up at the bottom. So that is the UV sphere. And then we have what we had before, which is the ICO sphere. And you'll notice it has there are options down here for your various prefabs that you're making. Like you can change the number of uh, subdivisions this has, all the way from one to a higher number. And if you look at it, you'll notice that it counts the vertices and edges and faces and triangles that we have up here and how much memory it takes up. And you can increase it. You notice it's taking not much more uh, resources. So we have 30 uh, edges and uh, 20 triangles. Now we have 80 triangles. Now we have 320, and we're on our third subdivision. But it's getting more smoother, you can say. And there are di diminishing returns there, but they can definitely work in your favor. And then so there's also the cylinder. Also has uh, little options here. You can change what you'd like there, depending on how smooth you want it and how much or how quickly you want something to render. Because the more stuff that is in here, uh, the longer it will take the computer to do all the math to figure out what it looks like. The same here with a cone. You get it all the way down to a, a triangle or a pyramid. Yeah. All the way up to uh, something approximating a smooth cone. And then there's also the torus, which is, you know, every mathematician's favorite thing to work with. And there's also a grid, which uh, to me looks like a plane. I haven't used this. I think it might have a couple of different uh, options that help it work out. I haven't worked with it, so I'm not going to comment on that. And there's also a monkey, which is just a 3D kind of uh, shape. It's got a bunch of different features here. So if you're trying to test the lighting of a scene, you can just pop it in there and get some something more complicated than just a sphere or a cylinder to kind of show off how light hits things and you know how it does them. And you notice that uh, the monkey here, uh, by the way, her name is Suzanne. This is kind of the uh, mascot for Blender. Uh, every, as I was saying, with the lighting, when you put it into a scene, it's something different. It's something more complicated than just a, a, a sphere or a cube or something. And every single uh, 3D modeling program has something like that. Something quick, you can just throw in, test out lighting, see how it looks. And it was usually a teapot and a bunch of the other things, but for Blender, it is Suzanne, which is our monkey. And she's great. Now, you'll notice there isn't a subdivision thing down here that I can increase. So really quickly, uh, I'm not going to get into modifiers right now, but there is one here to make things smoother. It's called subdivision surface. And you'll notice it automatically makes her look a little bit smoother. So 
this is what she normally looks like. And you'll notice there are two selections here. There's for view and render. Now, no matter how high I set render, it's not going to change the way it looks here uh, unless I change it over to the render view, which I'm not going to do at the moment. Um, but then there's also a view, which changes what it looks like in our view. You'll notice I increase it, and she gets smoother and smoother and smoother. And so with the view, if I put it up all the way to 6, you'll notice it looks super smooth, but now my computer is just chugging along. It is nice, very smooth, it <laughs> looks beautiful, but it just takes a lot of work for my computer to be able to render this. And I don't have the highest end rig. So the view is there, so you can tell a little bit what it's going to look like but still be able to you know, get through it pretty quick. And then the render is what, we'll, what it will look like when it is actually doing the final you know, drawing of the picture for you, getting everything together for your scene. So you can put the view down really low for when you have a bunch of objects in the scene to keep the triangles that the computer has to figure out where they are really, really low. But then the render, when you tell it, hey, it's showtime, it'll take its time and make everything look fantastic. So yeah, super quick so that the uh, artists can move around and make things work faster. And once you hit, it'll just kind of stay in, in like a limbo status until you hit apply. And now it's actually been subdivided into all of these vertices and meshes and quads mostly. And you'll notice everywhere that there was just quads, it easily subdivided into a nice mesh of more quads. You'll notice here in the eye, we get some weird patterns here. And those can uh, inc or make some kind of strange Artifacts there, a little nose. Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, Suzanne. Lots of, lots of triangles. Right. So those are just kind of the prefabs. You usually uh, pop something out and make something, and that's actually what we're going to be doing in our next video. Until then, I'm Kale the Quick. Thanks for watching, and don't die.